Hey, I'm Danny with The Culture Project, and today we're going to talk about why saving sex for marriage actually makes sense. What happens when the phrase saving sex for marriage is brought up? It's usually followed by an eye roll and the thought that it's completely outdated and doesn't make sense in today's society. And I don't blame you, because we are being told to say no to something that is so good. But none of us are ever actually told why. To put it simply, saving sex for marriage is saying yes to love and all that it requires. In our culture today, we are being told to give in to every single one of our desires, whether that be food or a Netflix binge or sex, eventually leading us into a life where our desires are controlling us instead of us controlling them. Think about this. If we live lives enslaved to our passions while we are single, sleeping around and watching porn, do you think we'll be able to conquer these temptations within marriage? No. We will continue doing the same things within marriage because it's all we've ever known. Because we were never taught how to properly order our desires. We may quickly lose interest in our future spouse and look outside of our marriage to fulfill our desires. Our desires that have been running wild our entire lives. Unfortunately, there isn't a miraculous switch that turns off temptations once we say, I do. The man or woman, the husband or wife we wish to be in the future, we have to start now. I'm definitely not telling you to hide or suppress your desires or that sex is bad or dirty itself because it's not. It's exactly because sex is so good that we must honor it in a place of total commitment of love to one another. And maybe you're saying, you gotta test drive a car before you can buy it, right? To which I would say, human beings aren't cars. Your significant other isn't an object that loses half of its value the second it's driven off the lot. We are worth so much more than that. You are worth so much more than that. Sex belongs within marriage because through sex, we are speaking the wedding vows in the flesh. Through our bodies, we are telling another person that I am giving myself to you in a free, total, faithful, and fruitful union. And when we're having sex outside of marriage, we can't keep these promises and are basically lying to this other person through our bodies. We have to remember that sex and love are not synonymous. And often the sexual embrace outside of marriage is one of youth, not of love. And although sex is a good and important part of marriage, it is not the most important part of marriage. Because sex won't take care of you when you're lying in bed sick. Sex won't stay up with the baby at 2 a.m. when you're both exhausted and sex won't hold a marriage together. Self-sacrificial love will. A man or woman who knows how to love will. So I wanna ask you some questions. What kind of life do you want to live? What kind of relationships do you wanna have? What kind of love do you think you deserve? If a man or woman isn't willing to wait for marriage and commit his or her entire life to you to love and serve through sickness and in health, are they really deserving the gift of your sexuality? the gift of you. You deserve to live a life fully alive, not enslaved to your desires or using others for your personal pleasure. You are worthy of being waited for. So if you wanna live a life full of the love that you deserve, I invite you to commit or recommit yourself to saving sex for marriage. Recommit yourself to your future spouse and save your relationship before it even starts. Thanks for watching. Click here to subscribe and here to watch more videos. To find out more, go to thecultureproject.org.